Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word, and today is Monday of the sixth week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened to uh, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we begin this passage, I want to point out one little tiny particular word at the very beginning. It says, we set sail from Troas. And actually, I didn't mention it on Saturday, but the very final verse of the previous section that was a part of Saturday's uh, Mass readings, uh, it says, when Paul had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia. Now, one of the things that we see here is that somewhere up there uh, in uh, the area of Lystra and Derby in that area, there was another person that joined the apostolic company, St. Luke himself. This is where Luke becomes a part of the story. Everything before that is a, rec- uh, a record of what he had uh, heard and uh, received from Paul, Silas, Barnabas, and so many others. But now we have his personal account beginning now as he is a part of the apostolic company moving west um, out of Asia Minor. And so they set sail from Troas, which is at the very edge, the very uh, western edge of Asia Minor. And they set sail through the Aegean Sea. It says making a straight run uh, for Samothrace, which is an island right there in the middle of the Aegean Sea. And then they, they make sure at Neapolis and uh, they go to Philippi. One of the things that they're doing is they're actually, once they get back on land, is they're traveling the major trail route uh, and trade route that um, connects the east and the west, the east of Asia Minor and down into Jerusalem with the west out into the European areas. And there's this one major road that travels the whole way And it's about the only way they can get there. And so this road actually takes them right through Philippi. So this makes Philippi a major city. It's a city, it's a Roman colony. The Romans are running it. But it's also a a very wealthy city because this is a part of the trade route. And so there are people coming from all over. As we see in part of the passage, we have Lydia from Thyatira. And uh, she is there uh, again Uh, as a dealer in purple. So it is at Philippi that uh, we see Paul establishing the first church in Macedonia, which is basically northeastern Greece. And, uh, of course, later on, he writes that beautiful epistle to the Philippians. And this is his first contact in that city, his first contact with the people at Philippi. And it is here that uh, they first go to the synagogue and they talk about uh, the Lord there. But later on, they go outside the city gate of Philippi and they find a little place along a river uh, where they could pray. And it was there that they began to sit and talk with the people who had garnered an interest in knowing more about the gospel. And one of the people that was there was a woman named Lydia. And she was a God-fearer. That Basically, it's, it's kind of like the Ethiopian eunuch that we had met before who went to Jerusalem. He was not a Jew nor converted to Judaism, but he was drawn to the worship of God as was expressed through the Jewish faith. Well, the same is true here. We have uh, Lydia, who um, was a God-fearer. She was intrigued by 
what was there. And so when she heard the gospel, she and her whole household, we don't know specifically how many or, or who it was, but her entire household was baptized and, and she became a part of the Christian faith. And isn't it interesting that one of the first things that happens is her desire to be used as a place of hospitality uh, for Paul, Silas, and the whole apostolic company. And so she really urged them, and actually they did go and uh, stay with, um, with her. So it was uh, something that's very, very, very exciting to see how the church, even at its very beginning, really uh, was trying to take care of its own. Now, some interesting things happen, actually, before they, uh, they get to Lydia's house, and so we will save that for tomorrow. But uh, suffice it to say, one of the things we're seeing here is, again, uh, the pattern that Paul has used uh, before is the one that he's continuing to use, visiting the synagogue, but then making use of time elsewhere to really bring the gospel to whoever would want to listen. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we will see you again tomorrow, the Lord willing, on uh, Day by Day in the Word as we continue our journey through uh, the Acts of the Apostles. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.